Here we're back at this 1984 Toyota Corolla with the customer's flammable refrigerant, as you can see I use. And uh, if you look back at the other, other videos, you see I'm, I'm not fond and I'm not for and I'm kind of against this kind of stuff, but I thought it would make an interesting video. And remember, this is the instructions. And uh, if you want to know more, you can go to their website. I do not recommend using this product. This is just for entertainment purposes only. If the customer wanted this installed. Uh, check this out. I told them at least get a receiver dryer. Because all the customer doesn't want to have a receiver dryer. They just want to put it in minimum. Well, remember last night in the other video, I put this at... Um, nitrogen pressure decay test and I filled it up and it was at 200 psi and there was no leak it was holding perfect check this out right there we got leak city leaks do not all happen just under pressure some of them ain't need heat so when this got hot it started leaking but under ambient conditions, static pressure, it did not leak at 200 PSI. Uh, it was, did have a leak under vacuum, a very small one. I had the micron gauge on. I had the vacuum pump on it all night. And it only came down to like 500 some microns. And when I turned it back off, it slowly would keep creeping up. And it went over 4,200 microns. So I knew it was not just moisture. Uh, and because this has some really funky ass ghetto hack way of doing it where they say on here you do not have to uh, put vacuum on the system <laughs> that, that's that's kind of crazy um, so but I put it on the vacuum pump anyway because I believe in a clean dry system should always even though the system was never opened original since 1984 uh, I always believe in changing the desiccant material because it has a limited life because of all the rubber hoses the moisture intrusion into the system saturates the desiccant material inside the dryers so they need to be replaced anyway so now he's going to be changing the dryer but that was uh so here's our pressure coming out cold so it works. I knew it would work. Hydrocarbon refrigerants are an excellent refrigerant. But uh, would you trust a flammable explosive hydrocarbon refrigerant inside a car in an evaporator that is uh, 1984, an old evaporator that could be corroded, cracked, or will crack soon after you put it into use? What would happen if I take two of these cans and I put them inside the car and I release all the gas and then turn the ignition key on or, or anything that makes a spark. Put an igniter in there. Let's, let's put two of these cans in a car, release all the refrigerant into the passenger compartment and then ignite it and see what happens. Can you get, guess why you don't want to use flammable refrigerants in a car? So. This will be coming out. As you can see, it's all leaking out. And uh, the EPA allows this stuff to be sold on the market to people. The Better Business Bureau, or whatever, the Consumer Protection Agency, they allow crap like this to be sold. And there's suckers every day who will buy stuff like this. And uh, for entertainment value, scientific experimentation and educational purposes only is the only reason I'm doing this because hey I'm bored <laughs> okay guys I'll see you later you don't have to give this a thumbs up because I'm against this stuff <laughs> all right see ya bye